Yasumati Nandana Rajabara Nagara Gokula Hanjana Kahanayasa Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. 
Go around them. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Ram, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hey, Chris, Chris, Hey, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare. Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna 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 Hare Hare Hey Hare Rama Hare Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Nithai Gaur Hari Bhav Hari Bhav Hari Bhav Hari Bhav Hari Bhav Jaya Panchatadva 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 Jaya Panchatadva Prabhu Pad, Prabhu Pad, Prabhu Pad, Hai Prabhu Pad, Hai Hai Prabhu Pad, Prabhu Pad, Prabhu Pad, Hai Prabhu Pad. Sumati Nandana, Prajabhara Nagara, Gokula Ranjana. Kana! Nope, I'm not coming. <laughs> His mother calls him Kana. Nope, I'm playing. You want to feed me, but I'm not coming. Krishna likes to play, he doesn't want to eat, but he has to sometimes. <laughs> okay, so, Srimad Bhagavatam. Canto 8, chapter 2, verse number 32. The elephant, Gen Gajendra's crisis. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Mm. Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Yaham chatam yami param parayanam. Namam mime jatayat akturam gaja. Kuta karinya prabhavanti mohitam. Grahena Pasena Vidatur Arito Grahena Pasena Vidatur Arito Piaham Chatam Yami Param Parayanam Piaham Chatam Yami Param 
Mamimam Gyataya Aturam Gaja Kuta Karinyam Prabhavanti Mochitum Grahena Pasena Vidatur Avritor To Pyaham Chitam Yami Param Parayanam Na. Na. Not <coughs> mum, me, me. Ime. Ime, all these, Gyataya, friends and relatives, the, ele the other elephants, <coughs> Aturam, in my distress, Gaja, the elephant, Guta, how, Karinya, my wives, Prabhavati, are able, Mochitum, to deliver from this dangerous position, Grahena, by the crocodile, Pasena, by the network of ropes, Vidatu, of providence, Avrita, captured, Api, although I am in such a position, Aham, I, Cha, also, Tvam, that the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Yami, take shelter of, Param, who is transcendental? Parayanam. And who is the shelter of? Even the exalted demigods, like Brahma and Shiva. Translation. This is Gajendra speaking in his somewhat helpless situation. The other elephants, who are my friends and relatives, could not rescue me from this danger. Then what to speak of my wives? They cannot do anything. It is by the will of province that I have been attacked by this crocodile, and therefore I shall seek shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is always the shelter of everyone, <coughs> even of great personalities. <coughs> This material world is described as padam padam ya vipadam, which means that at every step there is danger. A fool wrongly thinks that he is happy in the material world, 
but in fact he is not. For one thinks in that way is only illusion. At every step, at every moment, there is danger. In modern civilization, one thinks that if he has a nice home, a nice car, his life is perfect. In Western countries, especially in America, it is very nice to possess a good car, but as soon as one is in the road, there is danger because at any moment an accident may take place and one will be killed. The record actually shows that so many people die in such accidents. Therefore, if we actually think that this material world is a very happy place, this is our ignorance. Real knowledge is that this material world is full of danger. <coughs> We may struggle for existence as far as our intelligence allows, and we may try to take care of ourselves, but unless the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna ultimately saves us from danger, our attempts will be useless. Therefore, Prahlad Maharaj says, Balasya neham saranam pitam nishim ha natasya cha dam udavanti majato nao tapasya tatprat vidaya viha jaseis tas Tavad vibhotan ubritam tam upeksitanam. It's from Srimad Bhagavatam 7.9.19. We may invent so many ways to be happier to counteract the dangers of this material world, but unless our attempts are sanctioned by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they will never make us happy. Those who try to be happy without taking shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are mudhas, rascals. Namam duskritino mudha prapadyante naradharma. Those who are the lowest of men refuse to take Krishna consciousness because they think that they will be able to protect themselves without Krishna's care. This is their mistake. The decision of the king of the elephants, Gajendra, was correct. In such a dangerous position, he sought shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Omagyan timirandasya. Gena jana salakaya chaksu unmilitam yena tasmai shri gurvena maha shri chaitanya manobhistam stapitam yena bhutale swayam rupa gadam mayam vidati swam padantikam Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Asari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Hila Prabhupada ki jai. Vanchakalpa trubis chakri basindu veva cha patitanam bhavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namaho namaha. <coughs> so, Prabhupada's purport is very, to, to the point, based on this verse. Rake Krishna Mori Ke, Mori Krishna Rake Ke. Which means, Rake, Rake means protection. Uh, no one can protect themselves unless Krishna gives protection. And no one can do anything to harm a person who is protected by Krishna. Mm -hmm. So that's the idea, is to take shelter of the Supreme Lord. He's the supreme power within creation, and therefore nothing can escape his you know, jurisdiction. He likes to give protection to his devotees, and therefore, but he also wants us to seek his protection. Sometimes he gives protection even without us seeking it, but not always. Because he wants to teach us also that the material energy works under his control also. So the material energy gives us trouble, which is the energy of Krishna. And at the same time, Krishna is there to give you protection. So both are working under his control. One is directly and the other one is indirectly. So not taking, people take shelter of Krishna indirectly by arranging, as we see here, we have this elephant who's quite powerful elephant. He has many friends, relatives, and wives. And when he was fighting, he fought for a long time. 
the demigods were astonished just to see how long that fight went on. It went on for a thousand years they were fighting. But no one could win, but the elephant, because he was outside of his natural environment, he was getting weaker and weaker. And the crocodile was getting stronger because he was in his natural environment. Prabhupada makes this point in another verse where he says that one should learn to fight in the, in the where the best you can fight. You should fight where you, but in other words, ashram. What ashram is the best for you to make advancement in Krishna consciousness? That's basically the understanding. And so we choose an ashram not so much because it's, well, I like this one, I don't like this one. What is best for my spiritual advancement? So then people are different and people have different inclinations, tendencies and personalities. So some do good in one ashram and will not do good in another and vice versa. So here we find the elephant is getting weaker and weaker and weaker because he's outside of his environment. <clears throat> and the crocodile, it being in his environment, is getting stronger and stronger. So then he realizes there's nothing left to do. He came to that realization only when he became overwhelmed. He didn't come to that realization at first. And that was his mistake, you might say. Because as Prabhupada says, you know, this place is dangerous. Padam padam ya vi padam. This verse is from the 10th canto spoken by Lord Brahma himself. There's danger at every step. Prabhupada talks about driving on a highway and there's always accidents. Uh, usually every summer I go to America and spend a couple months there. And I spend some time in Chicago. And I'm driving along the highways in Chicago. They have these big, well, right above the traffic, they have these big, you know, kind of like signs where they flash different things on there. And they keep a record of how many people die in car accidents in the state of Ohio. So you're driving there one day and you see, you know, one number. And you come back at about a week later and the number's doubled like that. And it's really astonishing how many people die in car accidents. It's really like, I was remember just like, you know, like 500 people in one month in one state. That's just one state. <laughs> and there's 50 states. So, you know, every year it's about 30,000 to 35,000 people just in America die in car accidents. What to speak of injuries. So, you know, it's, and everyone's thinking, well, I got my fast car and you know, I'm, I'm a good driver, but the other guy may not be, you know. <laughs> so, you, you know, you wind up being victimized by somebody else who's not paying attention. <laughs> so it's a different, it's a, uh, you know, it's a difficult situation living in this material world. There's always danger. So you might say, well, I won't own a car. That way I won't get killed by car accidents. I'll stay out of cars. But you can die just by walking across the street. There was one very somewhat famous personality. Maybe you've heard of him. He's from, he was a German. He came up with this diet called the mucus-free diet. <laughs> and it was uh, mostly eating fruit. Um, it was just practically 95% was a fruit, fruit diet. And he uh, developed it and he was tested for health and his health was like, you know, the best. And he had optimum health. He was in his middle ages, in the late 40s. And then he became famous to propagating this diet, and he was writing articles, magazines, and appearing in, you know, public talks. So in one public talk, <laughs> he uh, gave a talk, and then he left the uh, arena, and he was walking outside. And he didn't see, but there was a banana peel, on the ground, and, you know, banana peels can be slippery. So he happened to step on the banana peel and it slipped and he slipped and he fell, he had his head on the ground. But the good thing is he died healthy. You should always remember that. <laughs> he died in good health. <laughs> so. so, you know, this is material life, you know. You can make all the arrangements you can to somehow 
prolong your life or try to protect yourself, but there's only one protection, and that is Krishna, the Supreme Person. And the thing is, Krishna likes to protect his devotees. He enjoys that. He finds great happiness when his devotees take shelter of him and he can give them protection. Because this is actually what he, sometimes he does that to devotees. He gives you a hard time. He puts you in dangerous situations. Why? Just so you'll run for him to, for protection. It's his way of bringing us back to him. And that's his mercy. Because he says, you know, because this material world, the, the material energy is very powerful. Shristi sisti chalapalaya saradeka chayeva vivati durga ichana rupa yasya tasta tesa govindam hari purusham tamah. It's a very powerful energy. Although it's an inferior energy, it's very powerful. We are superior energy. We are surrounded by the material energy, which is very, very powerful. Uh, the three modes of material nature, they are working under the direction of the Supreme Lord. And they're merciless. <laughs> you can't find mercy in the material energy. Oh, please, material mode of goodness, give me some mercy. Forget it. <laughs> material mode of passion, do the same. You can only find persons who can protection from Krishna. So the principle is that we are always in a dangerous situation. It's not like, well, only when I can notice that there's some danger, then I take shelter of Krishna. No, that's not going to work. Because this material world is constituted that it is called, Prabhupada was walking in the, in the Denver, Colorado, in one very nice park. And the devotees were there. Prabhupada was admiring the shrubbery, the trees, the flowers, the gardens. And then he said, but he turned, he changed his whole mood. He said, at any minute there could be fire coming through here and everything changes. And we are in a very difficult situation. That's the material world. So we, we might think, well, I'm okay, you know, I live in Slovenia, it's not a, it's a pretty good place, you can leave your doors unlocked and nobody will break in generally. <laughs> it's a nice place and, you know, people are not so criminal here. <laughs> you go to some other places, all you, everywhere you look there's criminals. London, right? <laughs> so, you know, wherever you go there's always some kind of situation where there's dangers fall down the stairs, you're not paying attention, your cell phone rings while you're driving and you answer it and you didn't see that car coming. Happens all the time. Now they give penalties for using cell phones while driving. So many accidents, so many deaths because of that. So yeah, this is a dangerous place. We don't really have to go into the details to understand. But the most important point here is uh, you know, Rake Krishna Morde K. Take 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 shelter of Lord Shri Krishna at every moment. Jai Shisi Pancha Tatvat Ki Jai. And this taking shelter of Krishna fulfills the desire of our of the heart by remembering Krishna. Because the whole principle of devotional service centers around one, two principles. And this is mentioned in the it's in mentioned in the Mahabharat, but it's then it's again mentioned in Chaitanya Charita. I think it's it's uh, CC Madhya Lila chapter 22, verse 1, 10, 11, something like that. Where it says, there's only two rules in devotional service. I can't remember the verse, but always remember... Huh? Ah, uh, smart to be. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah. Uh, I can't remember what you said, but it, it's right. I know it's. Right. Uh, yeah, that verse it illustrates the essence of the process. There's only two rules: always remember Krishna, and the second rule is never forget Krishna. <laughs> That's all. That's the only two rules. So everything we do should center around these two, two main principles, to always remember Krishna. 
And it's not easy to remember Krishna. You have to have some attraction for Krishna in order to remember. Just like if I ask you to remember, you know, the president of, you know, Slovenia. Why? Well, you know, I don't, you know, he's not so far out, you know. But, you know, maybe there's a rock and roll star that I can remember easier, you know. <laughs> or a bhajan singer. <laughs> So if we have an attraction for a particular personality, we more easily can remember that personality. And that's how love works. When you, when you love someone, you're always thinking about that person. Right? And Prabhupada said, this is the principle. Try to develop attraction for Krishna by hearing about Krishna. This is how you develop your attraction. Because Krishna is all attractive, and as you hear about him, you develop an attraction. As you develop an attraction, you remember him more. As you remember him more, you're protected from all material dangers. And this is not a euphemism where we think, well, well, Krishna, will he protect me or not? He will, if you, if you actually take shelter of him. He does give protection. It was one situation, I think I've told this story here before, but it's very instructive. Two devotees were sent to Bangladesh to preach during the war in 1972 in Bangladesh. Prabhupada was in India and they were in Bangladesh. And uh, Prabhupada preached, and they were two sannyasis, Brahmananda and, and Pushta Krishna Maharaj. And so it was quite dangerous there. They were trying to preach Krishna consciousness. And there were Hindus there, trying giving them shelter and hiding them away. But still, the war was going on and the Muslims were increasing their power and they were killing anyone who was, you know, so-called enemy. So it became quite concerned. Srila Prabhupada thought, maybe I should bring these devotees back. So he started writing letters, but the letters weren't going through because of the war. And so Prabhupada was praying for them. But at the same time, they were also hearing from the local people, you know, it's not good, you better go, try to leave. Because there were buses regularly leaving Bangladesh and taking refugees out of the country. But the problem was that at the border, the, the, uh, the, the Islamic army was stopping the buses and seeing who was on the buses. And if there was any so-called enemies, they would take them out and execute them right on the spot. So they stopped the bus with the two devotees on it. They saw them, oh, here they are. So they took them out and put them in front of a firing squad. <laughs> they were about to shoot them. And so Brahmananda gets an idea. He's got his beads and he holds his beads up in the air and he starts chanting as loud as he can, just chanting the holy name. Pushta Krishna gets the idea and, and he joins him. And they're both yelling the holy name out. Mm -hmm. And then somehow or other, here comes Krishna. <laughs> and then the Islamic army got bewildered I don't know, by Krishna's arrangement. And all of a sudden they turned around and the head guy said, all right, get out, get on the bus and get out of here. Put him on the bus and shipped him back out. <laughs> True story. <laughs> And there's so many stories of how devotees took shelter of Krishna and all of a sudden the whole situation changes. I think we also have that experience too in our, maybe in a smaller way, in our day to day life. As soon as we think of Krishna, everything becomes natural and easy. And as soon as you forget Krishna, you're, you know, you're on a mental platform. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. And so, yeah, this is the process to always remember Krishna. And so, um, the material world forces us to take shelter. Here we find people want to take shelter of some kind of material arrangement. There was one, yeah, I'll tell another story. I hope you're not bored by these stories. There was one devotee, this was in the early days of Krishna consciousness. Um, he was a very serious and very fixed devotee. But his father was a hunter, and he didn't like Krishna consciousness. He used to be a very big hunter. And so, um, you know, he was trying to preach to his father and mother. His mother was somewhat open, but his father wasn't listening to any of it. And of course, uh, you know, 
we learn from the scriptures that at the time of death, the Yamadutas come for the sinful people and take them away. And there's people who see them. <laughs> so this person, his father, he was undergoing some you know, ailment and he, started, he actually started to die. And he was dying at home. And while he was dying, he actually, his eyes got big and he started yelling to his wife, bring my gun, bring my gun. Because he was seeing the Yamadudas come and he was thinking, I'm going to shoot these guys. <laughs> but no gun can shoot the Yamadudas. His eyes were big and he was just fearful. He's yelling out for his gun for help, you know. But, you know, that's, what can a gun do against Yamadudas? <laughs> so, yeah, that story became, you know, a, an Iskan story after a while that this person's father saw the Yamadudas. Yeah, and it's true. That's why people at the time of death, materialists, they, they go through a very fearful experience. It's not only because of the pain of death, but actually seeing the agents of Yamaraj coming, and they're very, they're not nice guys, you know. They, they haven't won any beauty contests, you know. They're very, you know, quite hideous looking personalities. <laughs> and they come with ropes and various other instruments to, to take you away. Take your subtle body away and then bring your soul in the subtle body to Yamaraj and then after that it's more suffering. So this is the material world. <laughs> so one has to very be, very be, be very, very careful to always remember Krishna. You know, many, many times, you know, I think Krishna saved my life just because I remembered him at the right time. Somehow, when you remember him, the intelligence comes. Not only Krishna protects you, but he gives you the intelligence what to do in dangerous situations. That's also part of Krishna's protection. The intelligence is awakened by the, by the presence of Krishna, and then, then everything moves in the right direction. So that's Krishna. So here, you know, this verse from Prahlad Maharaj, he's also praying to Lord Nishringadev for, you know, for protection. Because without, we are, you know, we are small. We are easily overrun by the material energy, you know. And we're always prone to make mistakes. <laughs> Especially when you're doing construction work. <laughs> make sure you remember Krishna. <laughs> it's a dangerous service. Okay, so I'll stop here and see if there's any comments or questions about Krishna and the importance of remembering Krishna. Yes, what is your name again? Um, Marcel. Hmm? Marcel. Um, I missed that, but anyway. Say it real slow. Ma Marcel. Marseille. Marseille. Oh, okay, it's French? Um, no, I think it is. I think it is. It is Roman. Okay. I, I think. I, Italiano. Uh, <laughs> no. Oh, from Slovenia. Just Roman. Okay. Um, th um, thank you for inspiring lecture. Could I please ask um, if we are if we are seeking shelter um, subconsciously in a lot of material th things like um, how can we? Um, leave that protection and really um, turn, turn to Krishna. Well, that's why we have this class, to rem remind you, <laughs> to, to remember to have good... Why does Prabhupada have to, in the mean, the whole purport, Prabhupada is just talking about the attempts of the people in general, non-devotees, to find security in things that can't give security. These are called upadis, or designations. And they're also called fallible soldiers. If you have a soldier, but he can't fight, what's the use? So your friends, your relatives, whatever, your money, your guns, whatever you want, think you give you protection, cannot give you protection. You can surround yourself with these things. As Srila Prabhupada says, at the time of death, 
you have to fly your own plane. In other words, you may fly, the birds fly in a flock, but still each bird has to give its own effort to fly. So we may be an association of devotees, but at the time of death, we can take advantage of that association, but it's up to us to focus on Krishna. So yeah, so we have to remind ourselves, remember that this material world is dangerous, let me remember Krishna. And remembering Krishna is nice, because when you remember Krishna, you're with Krishna. <laughs> so practice that. So you might, the, quest, the answer to your question is you have to practice. Yeah. Practice remembering Krishna. So. Like we practice to become good at something, same way we practice a bit, to become good at remembering Krishna. Yes, Ur, Ur, Urugai? Or? Yes. Um, thank you, Maharaj. Uh, well, uh, I see a, a lot of intelligent people around. They don't have any questions more most of the time. So I have to. I, I have questions. Good, uh, good, good. Problem. You make the speaker happy when you give a question. You know. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Otherwise, we think, oh my God, <laughs> nobody liked the class and they're just thinking about Prashad. <laughs> uh, Sometimes you know what we do when we have a lecture. We put a person in in the class and we say. Make sure you ask me a question at the end. Yeah, so, you know, just... Thank you. Maybe you're the one. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I wanted to ask uh, uh, about... Uh, uh, yeah, this world is a dangerous place. And uh, uh, there is... Uh, uh, um, if a person is uh, inclined to fear fearful or uh, uh, like uh, has this n n neurotic inclination mm. uh, and and he, he he takes it very seriously and prays when he walks please uh, let nothing happen to me let nothing happen to me uh, i mean and of course he he is connected uh, with krishna in some way but then again uh, he might feel fr frustrated at one point because he's doing this out of maybe wrong reasons out of, of out of irrational fear and then he hates krishna at one point instead of uh, developing love if he's too fearful and turning to krishna but then he's like getting frustrated is this possible or or, or should there are people he? like that especially in particularly at this time the whole fear program is going on to keep people in fear. You know, the news is full of, you know, statements and, you know, don't breathe too close to somebody, you could die immediately, you know. <laughs> so, you know, they, they create this fear, the media, politicians, you know, just life in general. So not only are you, you know, threatened by the material energy, who want to make you more fearful. <laughs> so it's all around you, yeah. So there are people who become very fearful of everything, yeah. Uh, they become what they call, you know, we call the word uptight. <laughs> uptight means, you know, they're just an anxiety all the time. What will happen next? What will happen next? What will happen next? A devotee is not carefree, he's careful. <laughs> we're careful, but at the same time we're not fearful. <laughs> because we, you know, nothing can happen. And the word fear, fear, the definition of fear, is one of the definitions of fear is two, the number two. That means to see something outside of Krishna. There's only one. There's only Krishna and Krishna's energy, which are one. There's nothing outside of Krishna. So to see something outside of Krishna and, and become fearful of that means you don't, you're, you're not taking shelter of Krishna. Because nothing can happen without the will of the Lord. Like that. But at the same time, you can't play with material na nature. You can't be careless and think Krishna will protect me. That's not... You can't be foolish. Well, I'll just go walking across the street without looking. 
Well, you know, you're supposed to look. You're supposed to use your intelligence. So if you're following the general, uh, you know, way to live nicely, then be careful, but be, be conscious. We, therefore, we say, be careful of material energy and conscious of Krishna, that's all. Practice that. But people who are neurotic, you know, what can you do? You can't convince them otherwise, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you shut the lights off in some places when it's pitch dark, people are, you know, screaming. You know. They're standing there in the most, the light, the, the room is all lit up, and all of a sudden you shut the lights off and everybody gets scared. Nothing's changed. The light just went off, that's all. <laughs> when people are afraid of darkness, they're afraid of frogs, they're afraid of. Uh, what are those chimes, you know, chimes? Yeah. When people hear the sound of chimes, they get very fearful. Yeah, and frogs. There's so many, there's like hundreds and hundreds of what they call phobias. You know, what they call phobias. These are elements of fear. You can read it. If you look up phobias, you can find a whole list. People are afraid of, they're afraid of themselves too. <laughs> you know, so th this world is characterized by fear. Padam, padam, ya vi padam. But therefore, the devotee is abhayam. Srila Prabhupada's name was abhay. Abhay means without fear. Baya means fear. Abhay means without fear. So remember Krishna and practice that. And even if you forget Krishna, he'll still protect you if you're trying to remember him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to belabor the answer, but I, I was just, I got a little, you know, about a month ago, one of my devotees, he's an Uber driver, <clears throat> so he was going to his car so he could do his service, being dr driven by another Uber driver to get to where he was going, and all of a sudden, you know, the car got out of control and it spun into the other lane, and a big truck was coming, and all of a sudden, he, they all started chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And after some time, the car just stopped, and it didn't hit anything, nobody got hurt. As soon as they started chanting Hare Krishna, everything changed. I mean, they were really chanting. <laughs> it's not like the, the way we chant Hare Krishna. You know, it's like, whoa. It's like, with all your might. So yeah, Krishna's there. He's there. He likes to give protection to his devotee. One of the six symptoms of surrender to the, the Lord is to realize that Krishna is the only protector, not just the protector, the only one. If someone can else can give you protection, that means he's empowered by Krishna to do it. If Krishna withdraws that power, that person can't do it, can't save you, no matter who they are. Like that. So that's how it works. Adi, you have a question? No? Well, okay. Yes, uh, Gormitra. Hare Krishna. Hare. Thank you very much, Maharaj, for a very nice lecture. So, I like this last example of Gav and, of course, all previous. So, I wonder, like, you know, the, the, this material world is very dangerous, as you said, and even though we try to be careful, mindful, we do make mistakes, we have deficiencies. So I wonder, like, is there any ga gap, like, uh, if you do some mistake that uh, you will not be protected by Krishna will or by your destiny? Like, you know, you, like the will can fall off or you sleep uh, while driving or this construction work you mentioned. Well, this is a, opens up a whole new dynamic <laughs> because Sometimes people say Krishna doesn't give protection to the body, but he gives protection to the soul. In other words, he's, he's always protecting your Krishna consciousness, so it's not jeopardized in any situation. But he also gives protection to the body. So when he f appears to fail to give protection, 
there's a reason why. But it's not that he's failing. There's a bit, there's a higher reason that you can't see. You know, why do two people they get cancer, one gets cured and the other one doesn't, both are devotees? Mm -hmm. Maybe a reason. We can't see that reason. We have to have faith that Krishna always is the well-wisher of his devotees. He says that. But he's not always there to somehow or other fulfill our material ideas of protection. <laughs> it may come in one way, it may come in another way. Mm -hmm. Krishna can see past, present, and future. So when he acts, he's also acting. Sometimes, now I, this, I'll say this, this is speculation, but I think it's also been said in before. Sometimes Krishna will not allow a person to live longer because he sees that at the point they are now, they're Krishna conscious, and if they continue to go, they will fall into maya. So he uses that situation that they're in and takes them back at that time. Rather than let them go on and they'll fall away from Krishna consciousness. Because Krishna can see past, present, and future. So that's one of the ways he works to protect our Krishna consciousness. And he uses material situations to, to bring us closer to him. So this is like Matrisa, no, no room for mistakes, even though we are making mistakes, always protecting our soul. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada used to say, my spiritual master is wrong, but he's right. <laughs> there was an example when devotees had gotten this new building, Bog Bazaar in Calcutta. Uh, it was in a beautiful building donated by a very rich man. And before the devotees were living in a very simple way, now they had nice rooms. So one time a snake had somehow crawled up to one of the higher floors and people were getting, the devotees noticed the snake and everybody was getting running, calling snakes, snakes, snakes. So then Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was there. He called out and he said, kill the snake. So. Someone came out with a stick and beat the snake and killed the snake. So Prabhupada was there, our Prabhupada, and he was thinking, how is it that a saintly person can order the killing of a living entity? So he was, he didn't, he didn't think it was wrong, but he couldn't understand it at the same time. It wasn't clear why it was happening. And then, later on, there's a verse where it's Prahlad Maharaj where it says that snakes and scorpions, you know, uh, saintly persons, you know, uh, don't take pleasure in snakes and snow scorpions being killed. <laughs> Why? Because snakes and scorpions are types of animals that don't, you don't do anything to them and they will attack you anyway. Most animals will not do that. You know, if you do something to disturb them, they may, but snakes and scorpions will just attack anybody at any time for no reason. And so they're very vicious. So it says, so when Prabhupada read that, and then he, his mind was clear, you know. Like that. So we may not understand how things are happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, Radharani criticized Krishna for killing Aristasura. <laughs> He said, you know, you killed a cow. Well, Krishna said he was, a, he was a demon. Still, he was a cow. <laughs> You're supposed to be Gopal, you know. <laughs> so she wouldn't talk to him. <laughs> Krishna said, okay, Krishna said, all right, I'll perform some austerities and penance and I'll purify myself. Because she said, you know, you're impure. You're going to have to bathe in all the holy places. Krishna said, I'm not going to all the holy places. I'll call all the holy places here. So he did. And then he made his own kund and later became Shama kund. He bathed. And then he said, now you sided with a demon. You're polluted. So he was telling Radharani, you know. She said, now you have to bathe in my waters. And she said, I'm not going to bathe in your waters. It's full of your sinful activity. 
And she said, I'll make my own coon. So she got all her gopis. And they went to Manasi Ganga and they started carrying buckets and they dug a, a big hole with their bangles and then they made Radha Kund. <laughs> but while they were making Radha Kund, all the personified waters that came in Krishna's Kund start praying to Radharani. You know, Radharani, please bless us by coming into our waters. <laughs> and Radharani became compassionate, so she said, okay. <laughs> And then she took bath in Shamakun and then in Radhakun. And when Krishna saw that, he said, "Then I will exalt your kun as the be as being more glorious than mine. It'll be the holiest place in all of existence." So even Krishna gets she accuses Krishna, Radharani accuses Krishna for acting in the wrong way. What to do? Even if you're God. <laughs> so people can't understand God. But you have to have this principle that God does everything for the best of everyone. We can't see the long run, we can only see the immediate. That's why people get upset with God. Does that help a little bit? Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. We can give you the mic. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for your class. Um, I wanted to ask, in choosing the path of bhakti in like, for example, can you go up a little higher. Yeah. Um, just taking an example of my own life. If I hadn't, if I wasn't here right now, I'd be doing much more riskier things. Like I'd be doing a lot more like car travel, a lot more walking, a lot more dangerous things. So, being in an ashram, I, does it reduce my risk of something bad happening and <laughs> like because the probability of something bad happening significantly reduced if i'm here so how do i know <laughs> i'm not too sure about that one <laughs> but there's one good thing about your point is that you're in good association <laughs> and you're also you know at the, at the lotus feet of Panchatattva. So in principle, your question is correct. Yeah, your point is correct. But you know, be careful <laughs> <laughs> wherever you are. <laughs> because you know, people, I don't want to create any kind of scare program, but some people roll out of bed and that's the last thing they do, you know. <laughs> it happens, people fall out of the bed and <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Walking down the stairs, you know. <laughs> Working in the kitchen, cutting, cutting your, cutting uh, subjis. You have to watch when you cut subjis, you know. You know, sometimes devotees cut, you start cutting real fast. And I mean, I have this one devotee. He works in the kitchen. He comes into my room, and I said, "What is that?" He said, "Well, I got burnt in the kitchen." You know, yeah, you can be careful. You can get burnt on the fire. So yeah, it's not like what you're saying in is in rel rel relatively true. Yeah, it's relatively true. But in principle, mm, the idea is wherever we are, there's always opportunities to get you know in trouble and get you know hurt or you know even severely hurt. So it happens. So be, always be careful wherever you are. And that means re the atmosphere of the temple creates the opportunity to remember Krishna easy. So that's the advantage also. And then of course the association, yeah. But we should always rem remember that it could happen at any time. Okay, so any, thank you. There's one question on the internet by Avaduta Roy Prabhu. <laughs> really? A person that never asks us questions. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Rupa Goswami writes, even if a devotee takes birth as an animal, as human being, as a demigod, or even as a resident of hell, the Supreme Person always brings him to his lotus feet. Question. Please give some comment especially on the hell part. Yamadutas don't take devotees to hell. Or perhaps this is only a poetic license. 
I'm not sure I understood the end of the question. Does anybody get the last part? So the Yama duties take you to hell. Poetic. Poetic. A poetic license? Yeah, if it, um, when it says this of the hell part, the, devo the, the devotee can go to hell. Does this mean, this, is this only a poetic license or it has any meaning? Well, we have the example of, uh, who is it? Chitraketu, who was cursed by, uh, you know, Parvati to take birth as a demon. And of course, Shiva, seeing the situation and glorifying Chitraketu's you know, obedience to Mother Parvati, he immediately offered her obeisances and thank you, said, I'm my, on my way to hell. You know, Shiva spoke that famous verse, Narayana para sarve na kushchitat na bidyati svarpava arg pavargasyar kuya, what is the last line? Alpakuya to darshanam. That the devotees of the Lord, wherever they are, they remember Krishna in heaven, hell, wherever they are, and that's their glory. So if you're in, in <laughs> I don't know if I should tell this story. I'll tell the story. <laughs> uh, Prabhupada tells the story. Two devotees are walking along and they're on the way to the prostitute. And so while they're walking, they pass the Harinam. And so one devotee says to the, oh, uh, not, not devotee, but one man says to the other man, they're not devotees. He said, oh, there's the Hare Krishnas. Wow, they're having Harinam, let's go. And the other one said, no, I'm not gonna go. You go, I want to go to the prostitute. So that way they separate, one goes to the prostitute, one goes to Harinam. So the one at the Harinam, he's there chanting and then he's thinking, boy, my friend, he went to the prostitute, he's having a good time. Here I am just jumping up and down. Uh, and the other, one th the other one at the prostitute, he's thinking, boy, my friend, he's really intelligent. He's using his, um, life wisely. I hear I'm wasting my time with his sinful activities and this, my friend is... So Prabhupada said, who's better off? <laughs> That's what Prabhupada said. In other words, you are where your consciousness is. <laughs> you can be in a dangerous situation, but if you're Krishna conscious, it's perfect. And you can be in a nice situation, you can be thinking about Maya <laughs> and how to enjoy Maya. So consciousness takes us to wherever we're, wherever we're going to be. So it's all based on our consciousness. So you can be in hell, but if you're thinking of Krishna, then it's not hell anymore. Okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you for this lecture. We heard that um, that it's enough to remember Krishna and never forget him. And that it's all okay if we have um, the right consciousness of Krishna, Krishna consciousness. What? Why is there then in uh, Krishna consciousness so many standards, rules and regulations? Mm, yeah. When they start when when they practice or when they start to practice then they ask why there are so many rules and regulations, uh, so much standard in the kitchen, why do they have to dress in some kind of way? Well, there is two, I think you, you're talking about two categories. There's the rules and regulations that are govern our activities in devotional service, and then there's rules for the temple, rules for the kitchen, rules for the ashram. 
So there are two kinds, but the general rules and regulations are meant to get you off the bodily platform. That's what they're for. The shedas and vidyas, vidis. Vidis means things to do, and, and the shedas means things to avoid. So just like we have the four regulative principles, we avoid them. That helps to get our consciousness away from the bodily platform. And chant Hare Krishna, that gets our consciousness on Krishna. So there are rules and regulations to help us become Krishna conscious. And then for the etiquette of the, of the environment, for the ashram, there are standards how to work in the kitchen like that. That's true even in material society. There's rules and regulations. Wherever you go, you have to follow them because there's a certain protocol that allows for things to go in a certain direction. If everybody does whatever they want, then how can you get the job done properly? You know, so there has to be rules and regulations for operations. These are operating rules and regulations, that's all. Like that. But then the general ones that pertain to us directly, that gets you off the bodily platform. And it helps you remember Krishna more. They're supportive. That's what they are. They support the idea of remembering Krishna. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, Sabina. That makes sense? Yes, clear? Yeah. Hare Krishna, thank you very much, Maharaj, for this lecture. Um, regarding um, the protection of Krishna, oftentimes we hear that if we strictly follow the rules and regulations, and um, <clears throat> these rules actually uh, by themselves protect us, from any danger. Um, however, um, one is not supposed to blindly follow the rules. So, for instance, if we see like there are like different standards, different rules, like in different temples, people do not like um, forbid people to carry the ghee lamp and spread it among others if they're not wearing Vaishnava clothes. And in some temples they're like, um, like even yelled at in front of Panchatattva. So, <laughs> how to understand this? Yeah, it's, you can get overwhelmed, can't you? <laughs> uh, yeah, we have to learn. I mean, Prabhupada spent a lot of time teaching us these things in the early days. He did it like personally. He even taught us how to wash the floor. <laughs> we didn't even know how to wash the floor. <laughs> he probably taught us everything, which are the basic principles. Some of them are rules and regulations, and some of those are just the ways to get things done in a very easy and very direct way. Well, life is about that. Wherever you go, you're going to find there's a way to live that is, you know, recommended. <laughs> People who don't follow any rules and regulations, do whatever they want, whenever they want, are never happy. They simply listen to their mind, that's all. And a lot of times they find themselves in trouble. So, uh, you're feeling overwhelmed with rules and regulations, huh? Uh, but as we mentioned, and this is the Shastra, if you remember Krishna all the time, then all the rules and regulations take shelter of that principle of always remembering Krishna. And then you always do the right thing. <laughs> There's no question about it. But we, therefore, sometimes it says senior devotees who are above the rules and regulations, they follow the rules and regulations to set an example for the rest of the devotees. Although they don't have to, because they're always remembering Krishna. They do it just to, because if yad yad arichesta, that whatever a great person does, others will follow. So if devotees who are above the rules and regulations don't follow, other people will follow, and then that'll be a problem. Mm -hmm. oh, <clears throat> When a practic practic practitioner 
of Bhakti knows that what we're doing here as a process and a, as a goal is Bhakti, mm. not as blindly following some rules that we don't actually understand and um, accepting some instruction from a person um, or from a, I don't know, Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. That is actually like really rude and um, there's an etiquette that you know. This um, is called Vaishnav etiquette. Vaishnav yeah. etiquette is actually the principle by which a devotee actually can understand how to practice Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. When Prabhupada was presented by one philosophical point. One lady, she said, this is what this person says. Prabhupada said, well, what is his behavior? If you don't behave properly and you're trying to practice Krishna consciousness, it doesn't work. <laughs> there is a certain etiquette, and it's called, etiquette means the way by which Krishna consciousness develops through your behavior. That means speech, action, even mind, all these things are part of what is etiquette. And we have, like, yeah, there's etiquette for all areas of Krishna consciousness. So the following the etiquette means learning how to act in the proper way. And a devotee is seen, a person is not so much attracted to another devotee by how much they know. We don't impress people by how much we know. We impress people by our behavior. If a person knows a lot but doesn't behave much, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not very, you know, people want to stay away from that. But even if a person doesn't know much, but if their behavior is ideal, that person's attractive. Mm -hmm. So this etiquette is really foundational to practicing Krishna consciousness successfully. So we have to, no, no, there is a way to behave. And that's, we call it rules and regulations, but the purpose behind it is to become Krishna conscious, or know that there's a reason behind it. I mean, you know, Rupa Goswami says, to follow rules and regulations just for the sake of following is not correct. And to reject rules and regulations and act independently and whimsically is also wrong, both sides. So you have to follow the rules and regulations and know why you're following them. There's a purpose behind them. And that is to help you become Krishna conscious. But they have an immediate purpose also as you're pr applying that like that. Mm -hmm. Just like you know, you can eat with left hand or you can eat with right hand. But if you go to India, in certain places you eat with left hand, they'll, they'll think, this person is uncivilized, you know. <laughs> so we were taught to eat with the right hand. <laughs> the thing is, like, we come from different uh, culture backgrounds and... But now we're learning what is the right way. <laughs> how, how, what if you have, like, years of psychological training and uh, to think of oneself that one part of your body is sacred and one part of the body is not sacred that psychologically develops uh, a separation within you and I don't think that's healthy so if I know there's Krishna in every atom of my being why would I say it's not sacred and well, if all my life I've been going to the toilet with the right hand, how can I just switch and say, okay, my left hand is now not sacred because from now on I will go to the toilet with the left hand? Well, <laughs> so what, what is your point, basically? You think that we should just do anything we want to do according to our own upbringing? No, just... Uh, Maybe say, you know, you worship the deities with the right hand and you go to the toilet with the left hand, but they are both sacred. <laughs> well, 
well, in India, in, well, of course, in, in just like if you, I won't do it, but if you point somebody like this, this finger is considered to be not a good finger, but it's the same part of the same sacred body. So if you point at somebody, like, so if you, somebody goes like this to you, do you feel happy about that? No, you know, ooh, you feel like you're being, you know, criticized. But this is an indication. So body language is also part of culture. Mm -hmm. Body language is a very big part of culture. You know, you can, I can just see what you're thinking about just by the way you're sitting right now. It's easy to see, you know. <laughs> There's those who are half out the door already. <laughs> And those who are tired, <laughs> and those who are thinking about everything else but what I'm saying. <laughs> Just by body language. Body language is very big, it's very powerful. So don't neglect that. <laughs> if you think, well, it's only in Krishna consciousness we do that, outside people also pick up on these things too. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. So there's a rule, there's a purpose why we do what we do. And when you learn it, you like it. And when you don't, when you don't want to learn it, you don't like it. <laughs> if you learn it, you actually enjoy it. Oh, this is the right way to do it. Okay. There's a right way to do it. Mm -hmm. All right, so your body is sacred. Then why don't you just put the food in your ear and let the ear chew it? It's, you know, it's... The body is all one, right? It's all sacred. But the body has different parts, and each part has its own particular function. So you can't say that it's all, it's all sacred, yes, but each part has a certain function. That's all. You know, there is people, and there, there's very... There are signs that people use. I mean, they're the whole science of mudra, you know, mudra. You can tell a story simply by your hands, yes, right? Just by your hands, you can tell a story. And mudra. And women use that in dance. Anybody who can't follow, who knows the mudra, but may not know the language, they can know exactly what, is, what, what uh, pastime is being played out simply by the mudras. I mean, you, you're, you're a yogi, right? <laughs> In the, is all yoga positions the same? <laughs> you used to, right? Oh, okay. You used to take us to the yoga centers all the time. <laughs> oh, that was mostly music, okay. All right, but the point is that there is culture, there is etiquette, there is behavior. All this is part of life. You find it in the material world, you find it in the spiritual world, you find it in the entertaining world, you find it, you know, there is. There is language that goes with part, with every area of life. There's a certain way to speak, there's a certain way to act, there's a certain way to think. It's all connected with your goal in life or your lifestyle. So if you connect the principle, Krishna conscious principles that are given to us by the Acharyas and apply it to Krishna consciousness, you'll find Krishna consciousness is really nice. You actually feel part of a spiritual culture. It's culture. Culture means, you know, proper behavior proper way of thinking also. Mm -hmm. We're getting to the end? Should I say stop now? Okay, so I'm, I have to follow the instructions. Okay. Thank you very much. You can ask my que your question to me at another time. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Sri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Vaishnavetikit Ki Jai.